precision and accuracy. These are words that mean slightly different things. Accuracy refers to how close the measured value is to the true value, and precision refers to how consistent a series of measurements are. So we can look at some data from three students. They weighed the same lead block four times. They each did this, and these are the, their results. And we look at this table with the numbers, and we're like, yeah, it's hard to tell exactly what you're looking at. This is why um, scientists often graph things. So if we graph those numbers, here's student, student A's results. The first time, he got 10.49 grams. The second time, he weighed at 9.79. Now we can see that there's a lot of variation between these four numbers. That is low precision. His numbers are all over the place. This is like throwing darts at a dartboard, and they're just all over the place. Precision, we take the average and see how close is the average to the true value. Well, the true mass is the blue line, and the average of the student's results is this dashed line. The, the average isn't very good either. So that's low precision because of the scatter in the results, and it's poor accuracy. So it's neither accurate nor precise. The student doesn't get a good grade on weighing the lead block. Student B, the values here are much closer together, right? And so we say this is precise. The student is quite reproducibly getting roughly the same number. All of the numbers are together. They're, they're close together. But they're all off, and so it's inaccurate. This average is below the true value of 10. So this is precise, but inaccurate. Student C nailed it. All of student C's values are similar. There's very little scatter. The ball, those um, bars are all about the same height. And when you take the average, it's very, very close. Here the average is 10.01. The true value is 10. So very close to the true value. So that's accurate and precise. That's what we always strive for. We don't always hit it. There are two kinds of error. There's random error and there's systematic error. Random error is sometimes too high and sometimes too low. And this is what causes a lot of scatter or imprecision in your values. So they're different, you know, some are high and some are low. We can get rid of some of that random error by making multiple measurements and averaging them together. Then the two highs and the two lows will tend to average out. And sometimes we can have poor precision but really good accuracy. Systematic error is where all the results are too high or too low. This is like, you know, if you're weighing bananas at the grocery store and you've got your thumb on the balance. Well, every time you weigh them, it's going to be too much because you have this systematic error. If you're measuring with a graduated cylinder or a burette and you're reading the top of the meniscus instead of the bottom, that's a systematic error. If your device isn't calibrated, if your balance isn't calibrated correctly, that will introduce systematic error. And you can make as many measurements as you want and average them, but that will not fix systematic error. Problem solving. We're going to be solving a lot of problems in chemistry. Uh, there's a lot of word problems, and I know a lot of people don't like them, but we can't get around them. Um, the fact is, life is full of word problems. So we're just going to learn how to do it. What we're going to learn is dimensional analysis. This is a method of solving problems. Yes? Can you explain random error? Yes, I can. Question is, can I explain random error? Random error um, is random. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. And, and you can't predict what it's going to be, but it has the equal probability. And because it's just random probability, then like if you make 10 measurements and average them, the random error will go away because it'll average out. Does that help? So solving problems with dimensional analysis, this means we're analyzing the problem 
by looking at the dimensions or the units. It's also called unit analysis. So we're going to learn that units are, are our friends. That's, I need to find a better way to say that. Units are your friends. OK, so we always, 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 and starting today on the worksheet, always write the units. It will help you get the right answer. Units are like variables in algebra, x's, y's, a's, and b's. They can be multiplied and divided, and they can cancel each other out. Okay. So when we're converting units, we use a unit equation or an equivalent statement or, or conversion factor, all kinds of different words for this. Here's an example. 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. That's one I want you to memorize. We're going to use it several times in lecture, and you'll probably remember it by the end of lecture. So this is an equality. 2.54 centimeters is the same length as one inch. They are just different names for the same length. We can make this into a conversion, conversion factor, which is a ratio or a fraction, by dividing. So if we take this, we take a 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. If we divide both sides by the same number, it's still equal. Let's divide both sides, excuse me, by 2.54 centimeters. Both sides of the equation are still equal because we did the same thing to both sides. It's like a teeter-totter. It's all balanced. If you put a 10-pound box on one side and a 10-pound box on the other side in the same position, still balanced. Not going to change it. What is 2.54 divided by 2.54? 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And what's centimeter divided by centimeter? 1. So this side equals 1. OK, that's not magic. It's just math. One inch over 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 numerically because the numerator is equal to the denominator. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So if I take a quantity like um, 5.1 centimeters and I multiply it by this factor, Am I going to change that length of 5.1 centimeters? No, because I'm multiplying by 1. It looks all tricky because it's got inches and centimeters and stuff in it, but it's numerically equal to 1. When you multiply by 1, you do not change the thing. Well, what happens with the units here? Centimeters times inches divided by centimeters. Centimeters divided by centimeters is 1. We say those units cancel out. And the unit we have left is inches. So then we do the math, which would be 5.1 times 1 divided by 2.54. 5.1 divided by 2.54. My calculator shows me 2.00787 And the unit is inches. The unit is really important. If you go to McDonald's and order 5, what are they going to give you? Yes. <laughs> they might give you meal five, but they're probably going to say five what? Do you want five coffees, five hash browns, five Big Macs? Do you want a number five meal? The number by itself doesn't tell us very much. We have to have the unit there so that we know what the number means. Because if I tell you my son is 22, is he a big kid in graduate school, or is he a little ankle biter? He could be 22 months, or he could be 22 years, right? He's 22 years. So 5.1 centimeters is equivalent to 2 inches. <coughs> now let's practice sig figs. <coughs> this inch to centimeter thing, do we have to consider the sig figs in that? That's an exact quantity. Okay, So those numbers have an infinite number of significant figures. They're defined. And so 
this is not going to affect the number of significant figures. So then all you have to do is look at how many did we start with. We started with two. We're multiplying by infinite, and so this will have two. So we're going to keep it there, and we're going to record this as 2.0 inches. Any questions? This is the basic idea of dimensional analysis. So this is a general format. Um, you've got your given unit. You're going to apply one or more conversion factors where you've got the desired unit on top. The given unit is going to be on the bottom because you want this unit to cancel that unit. And then you're going to end up with your desired unit. Um, here's an example. I kind of already did that example, so I'm not going to do that one again because there's ones later that are more interesting. General strategy. Identify the starting point. Find out what's given. Identify the end point, what you have to find. I went to the Mall of America this summer. It's huge, right? And so you go to the map. The map's no good if you don't know where you are in the map, right? You're like, well, I want to go to um, the Turvis, Turvis store and get this really cool periodic table cup, but I don't know where it is. Well, I need to know where I'm going, but I also need to find that red star. You are here, so I know how to, where to start, right? So when we're doing these word problems, figure out what you're given, your starting point, and your ending point. That's the first part. Next, we have to figure out how am I going to get from where I am to where I want to be. And that sometimes ends up being the trickiest part, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's use that strategy on this very simple problem. Convert 288 centimeters to yards. The numbers are big clues here. The number is usually where you're going to start. So here there's only one number. So we're going to start with 288 centimeters. And where are we going? Yards. Convert this many centimeters two yards. We're starting with a simple one. So I'm going to put yards over here. I like to leave some space because sometimes this isn't something you can do in a leap. This is a little bit like crossing a river <coughs> using stepping stones. Here you're on one bank, here you're on another bank, and you need to find some stepping stones so you don't get washed away in the middle. You and your friend may find a different path across the river. As long as you get to the other side, that's fine. The stepping stones are conversion factors. Before I forget, I know this is distracting, but pass these guys around. These are, it's a periodic table on one side and a whole bunch of conversion factors on the other side. It'll be helpful when we do the worksheet. So sometimes we can just start at the beginning and figure out a path to the end. Sometimes we look and start at the end and work our way backwards. So we've got centimeters and we've got yards, and we need some units that are in between that we know the conversion factors for. What could we convert centimeters to, to that we already know? Just we could do centimeters to meters. So I've got, I've got two things here. I, we could do centimeters to meters, and somebody else said inches. OK. Do we know the relationship between meters and yards? No. Off the top of your head. If we don't know, then this is blocked. There's no, we can't jump there. So that's not going to work. Now, that is on the, on the chart that I'm passing around, but we don't have that yet. So if we went to inches, could we go from inches to yards? We could. How many inches are in a yard? 36. 36. 36 inches equals one yard. And we already talked about inches to centimeters. We know that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So when you start out, you might want to actually write these down. Later on, you'll be OK without. So if you start on a path and you can't get to the end, uh, go back to the beginning and start over and, and take a different route. Some people might want to go inches to feet to yards. That works too. So this is my path, centimeters to inches to yards. You guys familiar with Dora the Explorer? 
Yeah, some of you are. Little cartoon show. And Dora was always getting lost. You know, she needed to get to the snowy mountains, and she wasn't sure how to go. And so she'd say, who do we ask when we don't know which way to go? The map. And this map would come out, and he would say, well, to get to the snowy mountains, first you have to cross the troll bridge, and then you have to go through the spooky woods, and then you'll get to the snowy mountains. And then they would chant, right? Troll bridge, spooky trees, no, spooky forest. Is that what I said? <laughs> snowy mountains, right? You kind of have to say it a few times or you forget, right? This is Dora's map. Centimeters to inches to yards. Now we're going to translate that into a math equation. I look at this and I see two arrows. Thanks. If there are two arrows, that means I have two conversion factors. I'm going to take this starting number and write that down. 200 and, oh, that's really small. Getting carried away with my zooming in and out. 288 centimeters. And I'm going to have two conversion factors because I have two arrows. Centimeters to inches to yards. Centimeters to inches to yards. Finding the path is the key to the whole thing. Once you've got the path, it's just follow the pattern. So we've got centimeters to inches to yards. I want to take this unit and put it in the denominator because centimeters is a unit I want to go away. I don't want to have that in my final answer. So I'm going to divide by centimeters, and those cancel out. I need to divide by inches to make inches go away. And now what I've got left is yards, and that's what I was trying to get to. This is dimensional analysis or unit analysis. The units are telling us what to do. We don't have to remember, do I need to multiply or divide? Put the units in. After we get the units in, then we stick the numbers in. Do you have to do it in this exact form? You don't have to do it in the exact form. And for, for a question like this, I know a lot of you could just take your calculator and, and, and get it without writing anything down. The problem is when we get to later things like stoichiometry or we do problems on worksheets like calculate the mass of the ice on the continent of Antarctica, which is the last problem on the worksheet, um, when things get more complicated, we need to know how to do it this way. So I want you to learn how to do it this way. At the very least, you need to be able to show your work in a way that another person could understand what you're doing. So this is not the only way, but this is what I recommend. Now we put numbers in, and we're going to look at this. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. So this part goes in the denominator, because that's where a centimeter is. The number has to stay with its unit, and there's one inch on the top. The top of this has to equal the bottom. That's the only way it's going to work out. Over here, we have 36 inches equals one yard. So the number one goes with yard, and 36 inches is on the bottom. We've got our numbers in place. Now we get out the calculator. Take this number, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Of course, you don't have to multiply and divide by one. But if you're, there are some people that want to do that, and it's fine. So I'm going to do 288 times 1 if you want to, divided by 2.54 times 1, divided by 36 equals. And I'm going to write this down. And then I'm going to look around for sig figs. 3.1496062299. And the unit is yards. Conversion factors are where we often run into exact numbers. So we need to look at these and decide, are these exact or not? One inch to 2.54 centimeters. Is this exact? Yes, it is. How about one yard and 36 inches? That's also exact. So then we don't need to worry about them. They're not going to change anything. We look at our starting number. Three sig figs, that means our answer will have three sig figs. The three, the one, and the four. So that's going to be 3.15 yards. 
Any questions? Yes. That's a good question. What about that 36? There are exactly 36 inches in one yard. So we could write 36.0000 if we wanted to, because it's defined that way. So because it's okay. infinite, we're just not writing. Right. Because infinite is always going to be larger than something else. Infinite will never be the smallest number of significant figures. Any other questions? So if it's an exact conversion factor, that means it has an infinite number of significant figures. That means you don't have to worry about it. Just ignore, ignore it. Let's do this one. Convert 9,255 9, cubic centimeters to gallons. Again, identify where we are and where we're going. So we're starting with 9,255 cubic centimeters. We're going to gallons. Lots of different ways we could get there. But we have to know the relationship. Any ideas? Yes? Centimeters cubed is the same as milliliters. Yep. And then milliliters to milliliters. And then liters to gallons. So he's saying let's go to milliliters to liters to gallons. The only thing we have to look for is do we have a relationship? Okay, so now I've passed out this yellow sheet. Let's see if we can find it. So under volume, we have one liter is equal to 0.26417 gallons. So we know this one. Milliliters to liters is metric prefix. And cubic centimeter to milliliter, those are just exactly the same thing. So I'm going to write these down. One cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And one liter is equal to 0 0.24, no, 264, 17 gallons. That is not one that I would expect anybody to remember. So here's our path, cubic centimeters to milliliters to liters to gallons. So when we write our equation, 9255 cubic centimeters, how many arrows? Three. three. That means three conversion factors. In the numerator, write the units in this path that we made. Cubic centimeters, milliliters, liters, gallons. Cubic centimeters, milliliters, liters, gallons. This is not the only path we could have taken. This is just the ha one we happen to do. This unit goes in the denominator. Milliliters goes in the denominator so it'll cancel out. And liters down there. Okay? Units first, then numbers. Now we're going to fill in the numbers and we can do it in any order we want. Um, I'm going to start at the end just to be ornery. So I have gallons and liters. I'm going to look at my relationship here, and I'm going to keep the number with its unit. So one liter and 0.26417. I see a lot of uh, instances where a student gets close to the right answer, but not quite, and they get so frustrated because they do it over and over and over again, and they like transpose the six and the four. So that's one of the first things to look at. Did I copy the numbers down right? Here, milliliters to liters. What does milli mean? 10 to the minus 3. So millis on the bottom, on the top, to make these equal, I'm going to write what milli stands for. Milli stands for 10 to the minus 3. Because if I put 10 to the minus 3 in front of milli, then that's not going to equal a liter. So I'm going to call that 1 times 10 to the minus 3 because that's going to be easier to enter into my calculator. And multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. Some people are bothered that there's no number down there. Put a 1. Milliliters to cubic centimeters. This is that one that we overlook sometimes. They're the same. 
one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. If it makes sense to you, I give you permission to just cross the cubic centimeter off and write milliliter in its place and be done with it. But here we're doing it the long way. Any questions? On your com uh, computer, on your calculator, this is one and then the EE or the EXP button and minus three, if you've forgotten. 9255 times one divided by one times one EE minus three times 0.26417 equals 2.44489335. Yeah, Gallons. Units on everything. One milliliter to one cubic centimeter. Is that exact? Yes, it is. How about this? 10 to the third liters to milliliters. That's exact. It's within the metric system. How about this one? 0.26417 gallons to liters. That is not exact. What we're saying is exactly one liter is equal to this many gallons, and that number has four significant, I'm sorry, five, five significant figures. So this has five sig figs. This one has four. This is going to limit our answer, so we're going to round this to four significant figures. 2.445 gallons. Any questions? Sometimes we have units raised to a power. Sometimes like on the worksheet today. When we have units raised to a power, we have to raise the number to the same power. And here's one way of explaining that. So we know that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. If we square both sides of the equation, it is still equal. If we distribute this square, we get 2.54 squared times centimeters squared is equal to one squared times inches squared. 2.54 squared is 6.45, which really, they shouldn't round that off. I'm going to fix that right now. Oops. Not that way, I'm not. It's uh, 6.4516. Why don't I want to round that off? It's, a, it's an exact conversion. I don't want to round an exact number. I'm going to keep 6.416. One square inch, because one squared is one. One square inch is equal to 6.4516 square centimeters. Not 2.54 square centimeters. Let me show you another example. So... This square is one foot on each side. The area then is equal to one foot times one foot, right? Which is one foot squared. Everybody okay with that? What if I write this in inches instead? This side is 12 inches. The length of the side is the same. A foot is the same as 12 inches. And then this side is also 12 inches. And now I calculate the area again. The area is 12 inches times 12 inches. Bless you. Is that 12 inches squared? It's 12 times 12. 144 inches squared. When we're converting squared units, the, the numbers involved have to be squared as well. Same thing with being cubed. How many cubic centimeters are there in 2.11 cubic yards? 
Well, what are we starting with? Yards. Yards cubed. 2.11 cubic yards. And where are we trying to go? Cubic centimeters. So we need a path. Any ideas? Yards to inches. And then inches to centimeters. And sometimes when we're drawing it, we don't anticipate very well, and it gets ugly like that, and it's fine. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to pretend that exponent 3 isn't there, and I'm just going to think of yards to inches to centimeters. But really what we have to do is yards cubed to inches cubed to centimeters cubed. So I'm going to write it down first. I have two arrows. I'm going to have two fractions. First I'm going to write it down without the cubes. So I'm going to yards to inches to centimeters. And I want to put yards down here. And I want to put inches down there so they're going to cancel out. And then I'm going to put my numbers in. And then I'll bring back the cube. Well, 2.54 centimeters is 1 inch, 36 inches is 1 yard. Everybody OK so far? That's how you would convert yards to centimeters, but that's not what we're doing. It's yards cubed. So to get this yards cubed to go away, I have to divide by yards cubed. So I need to cube the whole conversion factor. OK? When I go to do that, what I'm really doing is I'm cubing each of the pieces. The numbers get cubed and the units get cubed. So now the yards cubed cancel out. Over here, I need to cube the numbers and the units. And then cubic inches cancel out. You don't cube the 2.11. The two it's 2.11 cubic yards. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point because, you know, there's a fair number of students that get carried away and then just cube everything. So I told you to cube almost everything. So is the 2.11 in the very beginning cube 2? No. No. This is 2.11 cubic yards. If If the... 2.11 was going to be cubed, it would be either 2.11 cubed cubic yards, or we'd have parentheses around the whole thing. Because if you had um, 3x cubed in an algebra equation, would you cube the 3? No. It's 3. The x is cubed, but not the number. Units are like variables. Treat them the same way. You wouldn't cube this 3, so don't cube this 2.11. What we're doing here is we are cubing the whole thing. We're putting parentheses around it, and we are cubing everything. And if that is bothersome to you, um, please talk to me in lab, and I'll go over it and over it until you're OK with it. When we do this on our calculators, there's different ways to approach this. Um, I have a button on my calculator, and I really recommend you get the 36X Pro. They have them in stock at local Office Max and Office Depots. I went online and checked, because they don't seem to have them at Target or Walmart. Um, I have a little button that has X and a box on it. And I can use that to cube numbers. So I can go 2.11. 36, my little X box key, 3, and then I have to move the cursor over, and then times 2.54, my little box, 3, move the cursor over, press equals. You can also do times 36 three times, and times 2.54 three times. If you have trouble talking to your calculator, ask me and I'll help you in lab. So 2.11. 
times 36 cubed times 2.54 cubed gives me a big number. 1613210.75 cubic centimeters. Is that number okay? It's really big. Cubic yards, are those bigger or smaller than cubic centimeters? Bigger. They're a lot bigger. So here we have a small number with a big unit, and we're going to end up with a big number on the small unit. This is okay. How many significant figures should this answer have? Three. Our starting value has three. Some of you are going to have more trouble than others with significant figures. So here's like a little hack. Um, you'll be right, I don't know, maybe 80% of the time if you just go with the same number of sig figs as the number you started with. Usually the conversions don't affect the outcome. And this is another one of those cases where they don't. 36 inches in a yard, exact. This one's also exact. So we need three sig figs. Is it 161? It's not 161. We should put this in scientific notation and then round it off. So we move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six places. We're going to get 1.61. Then we're going to drop the three. That's four or less. We can just drop it off times 10. What did I say? Six? to the minus six, and then write the unit. That way then we don't have to remember to put in place holding zeros. And we're not being ambiguous. 161. Is this supposed to be a positive? Six? It is. Yeah, it's supposed to be positive. This is a big number, right? I have positive feelings about big numbers. This is supposed to be a positive. I don't know why I did negative. So then if we were to expand that, it would be the 161 one, and then a bunch of zeros, mm -hmm. and then that's okay. 161, there's a zero for the 3, and a zero for the 2, and a zero for the 1, and a zero for the 0. Yeah. But this one in scientific notation is best. Any questions? I'm sorry this is taking so long, but... This stuff is really, really important. Good test. With the, yes. Uh, if we had scientific notation, you would, not, would you include the 0.75 at the end? No. Well, I mean, if you're going to put the whole number in scientific notation, yeah, you can put the 0.75 in there. It, it just won't be a decimal point there. Um, let's see. Do we want to do this one? Let's do this one, because yesterday I did the next one, and I didn't do this one. And so if you want to see the next one, you can go watch the YouTube video. Let's do this one. A vineyard has 145 acres of Chardonnay grapes. A particular soil supplement requires 5.5 grams for every square meter of vineyard. How many kilograms of the soil supplement are required for the entire vineyard? Does that sound like a practical problem? if you owned a vineyard? It does. Dimensional analysis is useful in everyday life. You might not use it every day. I learned dimensional analysis in high school in physics class, and I'd have to say it's the most useful thing I learned in all of high school. We can do this. This is one of those problems that students go, ah, where do I start? Well, we read it. Let's write down the numbers, OK? <laughs> So 145 acres, got to include those units, and we've got 5.50 grams for every square meter. That is per, grams per square meter. Everybody okay with that? You need 5.50 grams per square meter. The other thing that's given 
is one cubic kilometer is equal to 247 acres. I'm not going to rewrite that because it's just right there and nice. What are we trying to find? Kilograms. So we have three things over here. We've got this conversion factor that was provided to us. We have 145 acres. We have 5.50 grams per square meter. There's a typo in this problem. You see it? Is acre a unit of volume or of area? Area. It's not cubic kilometers. It's square kilometers. OK, I feel better now. Now the choice is, what, what's the thing we're starting with? We have to know where we are so that we can figure out where to go. Let's look at these units. This is just a single unit. This is a uh, compound or complex unit, a derived unit, grams per square meter. There's more than one unit there. And then this is an equality, square kilometers to acres. Both this one and this one could be used as conversion factors, couldn't they? Re they relate two different units. This one cannot be used as a conversion factor. So the number that just has the plain old unit is probably where you're going to start. So we're going to start with acres, and then we're going to figure out what we can convert acres in to get us closer to kilograms. Yeah, maybe we should use this thing that they gave us. We could do acres to square kilometers using this. So we could go to square kilometers. And we're like, uh, I don't know. Um, well, let's look at this. What's in here? Grams and square meters. So if we went to square meters here, which we could do because we know what kilo means. That might be nice. And then this allows us to convert between grams and square meters. So we could get to grams. Can we convert from grams to kilograms? Mm -hmm. This is the hardest part of the problem, figuring out the path. And that's something that you need to get good at to be successful in Chem 1A. And I can help you get better at it, but you have to ask. Now that we've got the path, it's a piece of cake. We just follow our pattern. We say we have one, two, three, four arrows. I'm going to have four conversion factors. I'm going to start with 145 acres. And I'm going to write four lines. One, two, three. Oops, I made them too big. Sorry about that. One, two, three. I'm still too big. Oh, well, four. Acres, square kilometers, square meters, grams, kilograms. You just copy them down. The units in the denominator come from the previous term. I want acres to go away. I don't want him in my answer. I want to divide by acres. Divide by acres there, that cancels out. Then I divide by kilometers squared, and that cancels out. And then I divide by meters squared, and that cancels out. And then I divide by grams. Oh, I forgot to cancel those ones. There they go. OK, now we find the numbers. All units in place first, then put the numbers in. Square kilometers to acres. Well, that was given to us. One square kilometer is 247 acres. Meters squared to kilometers squared. Well, let's ignore the square at first. How would we do meters and kilometers? Kilo means what? A thousand or 10 to the 3. So I'm going to put 10 to the 3 up here where the kilo is. But what we really have here 
is there's 10 to the third meters per kilometer, and then it's squared. So the 10 to the 3 also gets squared. How you deal with this is kind of up to you. What I would do is I'd say, okay, well, 10 to the third squared is 10 to the 6. So that's 10 to the 6. But you might want to just multiply by 1,000 twice. Over here, grams in square meters, that's this other factor that was kind of hiding among those words. 5.50 grams per meter squared. And then kilograms to grams, kilo means 1,000. Kilos on the top, I'm going to put 1,000 on the bottom. 1 times 10 to the third. Any questions? Now, if you wanted to simplify and divide out some of these 10 to the threes, you can. Um, I think it's best to just do it on the calculator. How did you get that 1 times 10 to the threes for the grams? Kilo means 10 to the third. Mm -hmm. And so instead of kilo, I've got kilo up here, so I'm going to write what it means underneath. And I just stuck a 1 in it in front of it to make it look nicer. This would be 1 times 10 to the 6. Because 1 times 10 to the 3rd squared is 1 times 10 to the 6. So on my calculator, I'm doing 145 divided by 247 times 1 EE6 times 5.5 divided by 1 EE3 equals... And I get 3228.74493 kilograms. Is that a reasonable number? Well, let, let me ask this first. Anybody else get the same number? Did I do my calculation correctly? Okay. It's a big number, right? 3,000 kilograms. So that's like 6,000 pounds. It's a lot of stuff. Five grams per square meter. Here's a meter stick. So for every square meter, here's another one. That vineyard is 145 acres. I'm not a real good judge of acre, but acre's big, right? It's a lot bigger than your yard, unless you live out in the country. So every piece of vineyard, this square, needs five grams. Are there going to be a lot of those squares in a 145-acre vineyard? Yeah. So we probably are going to need a lot of soil supplement. 3,000 kilograms. How many sig figs should that have? Three. Our starting number has three. Acres in square kilometers, that's not exact. That has three. This one's exact. This is not exact. That has three. This one's exact. They all end up having three. So for the first one, um, 145 acres, would that be exact? Because, like, nope. No. No. You might be tempted to say that that's exact. Well, they measured it out. You know, they, the surveyor came out. It's exact. No measurement is exact. 145 acres has three sig figs. So um, we need to round in the tens place. We need to be careful. We don't have any space left. I'll, uh, I'm going to go. I'll go up to the very top. So we could put this in scientific notation, 3.2, and then we're going to keep the 2, but we need to round that up to a 3. 3.23 times 10, and we're going to go from here. 1, 2, 3. We're moving it three places, and that's going to be kilograms. 3,000 is a large number, large number, positive <coughs> exponent. So we need... 3.23 times 10 to the third kilograms. Any questions? Yes? 
You said some of the conversions in there were significant figures. Which ones were those? It's the kilometers squared to acres, this one. You do have to consider that. That's not an exact conversion. How do you know it's not exact? Because acre is an English unit of area, and square kilometer is metric. Okay, and the only exception that one is the inches. The only one you need to know is the inches to centimeters. And that's the only one that's exact? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Any other questions? Um, let's do this one. This is using density as a conversion factor. And I highly recommend doing this instead of using the density equation and rearranging it using algebra. Um, a lot of students are a little iffy on their algebra, and they end up doing the algebra wrong and getting the answer wrong. So let's just do dimensional analysis and get the answer right. So a drop of gasoline has a mass of 22 milligrams and a density of 0.754 grams per cubic centimeter. What is its volume in cubic centimeters? So this one isn't as crazy as the last one, but there's still some words in there. So we read the words, and now we're going to write down the numbers. 22 milligrams, 0.754. This fraction is written with a slash because on the computer, it's just a lot easier to do it that way. When you write it on your paper with your hand and your pencil, make it a vertical fraction so that you are more aware that there's a numerator and a denominator. So I'm going to do grams over cubic centimeters. Otherwise, students tend to see that grams per cubic centimeter is just like one lump of a unit. It's actually two different units. What are they asking? Volume in cubic centimeters. So we're trying to get to cubic centimeters. We have to decide which of these things are we going to start with. What do you think? The single unit. Milligrams. We can't use that to convert one thing into another. We can use this one as a conversion factor. We want to start with this. So we're going to start with milligrams. And then we have to figure out how to get from milligrams to cubic centimeters. So we might look at this and say, oh, well, we can use this to convert between grams and cubic centimeters. So if I got to grams, I could use that to get to cubic centimeters. So milligrams to grams? Yeah, and then milligrams to grams. Oh, yeah, we could just do that in one step. We can do that. There we are. The only way you can get good at this is to practice, OK? Two arrows, two conversion factors. 22 milligrams times, times. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. Milligrams comes down here. Are you seeing the pattern of this? Once you get the path, it just kind of falls into place. I get the units in, cross them out, and then I look for numbers. Milligrams to grams. I need the meaning of the metric prefix. 10 to the minus, ten to the minus 3. So it's 10 to the minus 3. Grams is 1 milligram. 1 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 milligram. That's not the only way you can write that, but that's how I'm always going to do it in lecture, to be consistent. You can also write one gram as 1,000 milligrams. But then people get confused and start telling me that 1,000 grams is a milligram. And that's like telling me that a foot is 5,280 miles. It's ridiculous. It's backwards. But this pattern of milli means 10 to the minus 3, you never put milli and 10 to the minus 3 together. The train agrees with me. This is the density that was given. 0.754 has to stay with the grams, so it's going to go in the bottom. There's no deciding, do I multiply by the density or divide by the density? The units are telling us what to do. I think it's better than algebra. So I've got 22 
times 1 EE minus 3 divided by 0 0.754. 0 0.02917. My iPad's getting tired. And the unit, cubic centimeters. How many sig figs? Two. 22 milligrams. That's a whole number, but it's not a counting number or a defined quantity or an integral part of an uh, equation. That's a measurement. It's got two sig figs. This is exact. This density is a measured quantity. It is not exact either. But this is two sig figs, three sig figs. We go with the smallest. And so we have 0 0.029 cubic centimeters. Two sig figs because of the 22 milligrams. And then the nine. So the Leading zeros don't count. If we put that in scientific notation, those goes those go away. Any questions? Yes. So you said uh since uh milligrams is uh as two to the This seven objects, that's counting. Can I count milligrams? <coughs> Are they discrete objects? No, they're not. And that's tricky. The whole number is just mess with your mind. Look, it was 22. That's, it's just 22. No. So most of the time, you know, so I guess you could call this a hack, too. You're, you're going to be correct more often than not if you assume that nothing is exact, <laughs> right? Um, the exception would be those metric prefixes. Um, that'll mess you up. But the other stuff like this, just assume that it's not an exact number. Anything that's measured, you know, if we said, you know, 25 people, well, yeah, that's exact. You can count 25 people and be exact. Any other questions? Yes. Can you explain um, the three, how it's three six figs? In this one? Like the really long number and then getting the 2.9 times 10 to the negative 2 from there? Um, this is two sig figs. Okay. Because leading zeros are not significant figures. Okay. So the 22 is where we got this information? The 22 is what limited us because this only has two significant figures. Okay. It's a whole number, but it's not a counting number. And so it is measured. It's just measured to the nearest one milligram. Okay. Yes? Um, the factors, like, are these all exact or just all Most of them are not. Um, on this uh, conversion thing that I handed out, um, if you look under distance, it'll say one inch, 2.54 centimeters, in parentheses, exactly. That one is exact. And there's one down um, under energy, one calorie, 4.184 joules, exactly. If it doesn't say exactly, it's not exact. These are good questions. Anybody else? You can read this and learn how to do that if you want to. Order of magnitude estimations is helpful, but I'm not going to, I don't have time. Sometimes problems involve an equation. Um, usually what happens is, you know, the equation has variables. They'll give you values or information that you can use to find the values for all but one variable. Then you have to rearrange the equation and solve for the variable. Um, let's see, what else is here? Okay, let's do this last one here. And then we'll be finally done. Yikes. Find the density in grams per cubic centimeter of a metal cube with a mass of 50.3 grams and an edge length L of 2.65 centimeters. For a cube, the volume equals L cubed. So this is one of those problems that requires you to really think and puzzle and figure stuff out.
This isn't like convert five centimeters into inches. So we read all the words. Let's write down some numbers. We've got 50.3 grams. We've got 2.65 centimeters. And those are all the numbers. What are they asking for? Density. density. So they want the density, and um, the units there are grams per cubic centimeters. So it's just to find grams per cubic centimeters. Density is the mass divided by the volume. So the mass is going to be in grams, the volume is going to be in cubic centimeters, and that's going to give us our density. This is a problem that has an equation in it. It has another equation hiding in it as well. This one, volume equals L cubed. Sometimes it's helpful to draw a picture and even if your picture is ugly, um, it can still be useful. So we're talking about a metal cube, and it's 2.65 centimeters on each side. Could we?